Hey, welcome everyone. My name is Shubh Prasad Koirala. I work for Questpond.com, and uh, in this session, I'll be teaching you Azure Cosmos DB in flat 30 minutes. So, Azure Cosmos DB falls into something called as the Planet Scale Database category. We have lots of products like this. You know, we have some products from Amazon. We have some products which are from Yahoo. So, Planet Scale Database concept has been there for quite a time. But in this video, my focus is primarily on Azure Cosmos DB. Before I start the session, I would like to thank IndiaMentor.com because I feel that uh, without IndiaMentor, uh, you know, we won't have been doing this session. So IndiaMentor is basically a central place, you know, where startups, entrepreneurs, co-founders, all these people meet together, like-minded meet meet together. So in case you are interested, please go ahead and uh, visit this site. So in this thirty minutes. What am I going to take? So in this thirty minutes, I have a clear-cut seven-point agenda. So first, I will start with what and why of Azure Cosmos, right? Then we will talk about understanding the term called as Planet Scale Database. We will talk about the problems of consistency when you are working with Planet Scale Database. You always end up into consistency problem, how to handle them, and then we'll talk about five different consistencies which are provided by Azure Cosmos DB like strong eventual session bounded prefix and so on and finally we will understand multi api support and we will understand how to connect to cosmos db using c# -sharp language now before i start let me tell you this cosmos db is a improvised version of document db so in 2014 we had something called as document db this cosmos db is a improvised version of it so my first 20 minutes of the video will be concentrately on the theory part because the theory part of consistency is very confusing and then later on the demos are damn easy so i'll be going to the azure portal and i will be demonstrating the demos so let us get started so before we start anything else let us first define what is cosmos db cosmos db is a planet scale no sql json database with multi api support now this definition looks long you know so what we'll do is first let us try to define this word cosmos cosmos means universe or to be very specific it means a well ordered universe it means something big and that's what cosmos db intends to do it intends to give you a planet scale database so now let us first try to understand what this planet scale word means and what try type of problem does this planet scale database try to solve so now here is a situation you have your database somewhere in us and then there are users who are using this database across the geography so now when any user who is in the us location accesses this database he gets the data faster as compared to the users who are in other geography like india nepal uk or so so on so the performance for the users other than the us location is not up to the mark so the solution for this is to bring the database near to the end users geography so let us say if i am from mumbai then i would like to access data from the mumbai data center so in other words you know what we will do is you know in whichever places we have our users you know we would set up their secondary databases or read database and our primary database or we can also term that as a write database is in the us So when someone writes in this US database we will send out replication to databases which are in other geography Now please note do not compare this with CDN or or BCP because CDN BCP DR is a byproduct of Cosmos DB but the main intention here is to bring fresh data live data near to the users geography in case of dr and bcp we do not read the data from that database it is only used you know when there is a failure in the main system while over here in case of cosmos db we are going to go and read database from this secondary databases so do not confuse this with dr and bcp plan so again i would like to clarify the vocabulary the main database you know where the data would be written we will term that as primary database or as a write database and the other databases we will term them as read databases or secondary database because this is the vocabulary i'll be using henceforth in this tutorial now one of the biggest problem to achieve a planet scale database architecture is consistency 
So here is a diagrammatic representation of what exactly is a consistency issue. So now let us say you have a US database, your write database, and from this write database, you are actually synchronizing to a Indian database, which is in India. So now let us say if, if you write something to this US database, must be takes one or two minutes to replicate this data to the Indian database. So at that moment, before the synchronization finishes, when an end user reads a data from US, he would see a different data as compared to a user who reads from India. So in other words, at some moment of time, you know, when the synchronization has not finished, the data would not be consistent. Now, this is termed as eventual consistency. Eventual consistency means that we do not do anything special as such. We just leave it to the network. We just leave it to the transactions, to the locks of whatever we are having at this moment. And because of this, at some moment of time, you would get uh, inconsistent data for the end users of different geography. Now, sometimes this consistency is okay. You know, if your application is not mission critical and so on, must be that this is okay. But now think about that you have a stock market application. So in case of stock market, if the values are inconsistent, then it would, then it would really create problems. So for this issue, we can switch to a more hardcore consistency called as a strong consistency. In strong consistency, client, the, the read clients will not be allowed to read the data which is not committed to all the geographical read areas. Means what? You can see that here is a small diagrammatic representation of the same. Uh, so this is, this P stands for a primary database. This S stands for one of the geographical secondary databases and the S2 is again one of the secondary databases. C2 is a client and C1 is a client for the respective secondary database. Okay. And you can see here, um, you know, data is getting committed on regular intervals on the primary database. Okay. So let's assume that first thing there is a value is equal to A. There is a, a value at 9 a.m. Then at 10 a.m., somebody commits value B into the primary database. So the primary database, as soon as the value B is committed, he starts doing the synchronization. So let's say at 10 a.m. itself, you know, the synchronization message is sent to, is sent to both of S1 and S2. So the value B is now, they have started synchronizing the value B to S1 and S2. So at 10, 15 a.m., the S1 sends a message saying, I am done with the updation. And let's say at 10.30, S2 also says that I am done with the synchronization. Now remember that in Azure Cosmos DB, it does not really take half an hour to update the database. This is just an example. So please note that this happens literally in seconds. Okay. But I'm just giving it as an example so that you can understand it. So in other words, the value B, which was committed in the primary database, is committed to S1 and S2 at 10.30. So at 10.30, it is confirmed that everything is okay. So now what uh, the primary database does is once he gets acknowledgement at 10.35 a.m., he says to everyone that everything is successful, right? So now, until this 10.30, if now let us say C2 tries to read the data, he will see the value A and not value B. Okay, even if C1 tries to read the data, let's say at before these commits happen, he will also see the value A. Not only he, but if even somebody tries to read the data from the primary database, he will also see the value A. Now this is consistent. So even if the value B is committed at 10 a.m., but all the clients who are reading from any one of the database, either it is primary, either it is secondary, they are all seeing a consistent value. Okay. Now, when the value B is committed to all the database that is approximately at uh, 1035 AM, right? After that, if somebody tries to read the data from uh, primary, he will get value B. Even you can see when C2 tries to read the data, he also gets value B and C1 also gets value B. So in a strong consistency, we do have 
latency. We do have performance issues, but it is consistent. Any client who reads from any geographical area at that moment will see the same data, right? So this is termed as a strong consistency. Now, both of these consistencies have their own trade-offs. So if you're selecting eventual consistency, you have low consistency. So at some moment of time, all the clients who are in other geographical areas, in different geographical areas, can see different data, right? But then you have high performance because nobody waits for anyone. In case of strong consistency, it is highly consistent, but then you have performance issues. You have latency. Latency means because, you know, all the clients will not be seeing any kind of uncommitted data. So any data which gets committed on the primary database, it takes some time to propagate to all the secondary databases and till then all the clients see stale data. So over here, you will be having latencies, you will be having performance issues. So both of them have their own strong points, you know, both of them have their own negative points and the choice should be made as per your application criticality. If consistency is prime, then you, you should be selecting strong. If performance is important and consistency is not prime, must be we can select eventual. But wouldn't it be great if we can have more consistency or we can have more flexibility which we can select between strong and eventual. So between these two extremes, if I can have more choices, then it would be great, right? So that's what, you know, what in Azure Cosmos DB, what they have done is between this strong and eventual, they have given you more three choices of consistency. So one is the bounded consistency, other one is a session consistency, and the third one is a prefix one, right? So let us understand these three as well, one by one. Bounded staleness. In bounded staleness, we will see data which is some hours old. For example, I can go and I can set the staleness to two hours in bounded staleness. So all my clients will be lagging behind the right database by two hours, right? For example, let us say that you have committed some data at 11 a.m. as value equal to A. And at 12, you have again committed value equal to B. So even after the committing of this, after 12, the value equal to B, still everyone is reading A. So you can see here when a client reads from the secondary database, he still sees the old stale value of A. Even if somebody is reading from the primary database, he also sees the value of A, right? So this is termed as bounded staleness. So in bounded staleness, there is a lag and, and you are okay with this lag, but the data is still consistent. In other words, either anybody reads from the primary database or any other secondary database, they all see the same value. If you set the bounded staleness time is equal to zero, then it becomes a strong consistency. Let me again repeat that sentence. If you set the bounded staleness time as equal to zero, then it becomes a strong consistency. The other important uh, consistency is a session consistency. In session consistency, whatsever it is, what other geographical databases, how much they are up to date. Uh, so for example, now look at this, you know, here we have the US database. It takes two minutes to synchronize to India. So readers who are reading from the Indian database would be following the eventual consistency, but the users who are reading from the US database means from where the commits have happened, right? Those users would see the recent data. So over here, it is kind of inconsistent, but for the user who is writing the data to the database, for him, it is consistent because whatever he has committed, he can read it, okay? So this is more from the perspective of the clients who are committing the data that they should see the fresh data. But for other users, you know, even if they see uh, the data with the eventual lag or with the time lag, it is okay. The next one is consistent prefix. In consistent prefix, the data is seen with the same order by which it has been committed to the right database. For example, now let us say on the primary database, the value was set as A, B, C, D. So, when, so and then later the synchronization happens, whatever the time it is, five minutes, 10 minutes, right? 
but the data when it is read by the client they would see in the same sequence so the order will be maintained so remember between the strong consistency and eventual consistency you have three more choices so remember first thing strong consistency everybody sees the data same as it is while in eventual consistency you can have uh, things which are up and down uh, but then none of the clients will be waiting bounded consistency is having some kind of a time period or some kind of a prefix in session consistency the client who commits the data will always see the fresh data but other people or other clients who are in other geographical areas can see stale data depending on the time which it takes for replication then we have prefix in prefix the sequence by which the commits have happened in the same sequence it will be read right so now you have the flexibility to choose between strong and eventual and to make more better choices right so in other words you know when you say that you want to make a choice of a consistency it really depends on two factors that if you want to be strong consistent or is performance the criteria for example you can see if you say that you want to be strong consistent right then please note your performance will be down you will have latency right but your consistency will be high but if you say eventual then in eventual the consistency would be low but your performance would be high your availability would be high so whenever you are making choice of these consistencies you should be very sure in what your goal is what kind of database you have what and your application how critical it is if you remember 10 minutes back i gave the definition of azure cosmos db as a database it's a planet scale database which is which stores in json format and it has multi api support now what does multi api support means multi api support means that the that the data is stored in json format but you can use any api which you are comfortable with for example i can go and say select star from table name right so i can use an sql api to get this database to get this values right or i can use a mongo api i can use a graph api i can use a table api i can use a cassandra api so so the other good thing about the azure cosmos db is that he does not tie you up with the type of api you want to use right he gives you multi api support a lot of times i have seen people saying that okay this database uh, is supporting uh, sql you know because there are joins there are this there are that good great right so that's why you store in sql server then you say okay some of the data i will store in mongodb because you know we have key value pair and i can just look up so you end up with having different databases at the back end you know because of the nature of the data or whatever it is right so over here now you can go and you can choose saying that i want an sql api or i can i want a mongo api or which kind of api i want so remember cosmos db is a planet scale database it's a planet scale db which is like no sql it stores data in json format and has a multi api support so that was a 20 minutes theory on azure cosmos db and i think it was worth investing time on the theory part because the consistency is so confusing that many seasoned azure administrators do not know which consistency to choose and they end up paying heavy bills right so that's why i spent my 20 minutes of time explaining you the different type of consistency so if you want to go and add azure cosmos db you can see at the left hand side we have a menu so you can either click here or either you can click on the plus new and you can just type here cosmos so azure cosmos db there it is right and i'll click on create so as soon as i click on create it says first thing like give a account id this account id is nothing but a unique name by which your cosmos database will have a url so i'll say this is my cosmos 123 uh so you can see now my url will be my cosmos123.documents.azure.com okay if you remember while i explained the theory i said that azure cosmos db supports multi api support so you can go and select you know the api which you want here so at this moment i will select sql again the subscription is pay as you go i do not have any kind of uh, pre created resource user group at this moment so let me create a resource group here 
res cosmos so in this i will add all my cosmos databases and you can see now this is the most important part so we are saying that our write location will be central us and i am saying enable geo redundancy so this will actually go and enable cosmos db on the various other data center locations right so let us go and click on create and you can see now Azure Cosmos DB is creating. You can see this small sign over here indicating that Azure Cosmos DB is getting created. So you can see deployment in progress. So let us wait for some time until the Cosmos DB gets created. So you can see now there the deployment is successful and it says that the document DB. Now remember, as we said, you know, as we started this video, I said that Azure Cosmos DB is an evolution of document DB. So you can see here it says deployment of document DB is successful. So if I go to now to Azure Cosmos DB, you can see that the resource has been created. So let us go inside this resource and let us say I want to go and create a database of a Cosmos. Now the structure of Cosmos DB is as follows. At the top we have database, then we have a collection and then collection has the JSON rows, right? So let us click on add collection out here. And uh, so you can see here in this add collection, uh, so let us go and put some database name here db1 and inside this db1 I will create a collection called as collection1 call1. I will not say unlimited, I will say fixed, remember always be, be a miser, right? Do not try to select something which is uh, at the higher end, right? And, uh, and I'll just go and say okay, right? You can see there is something called as an RU, I'll talk about that later on, unique keys and so on, we'll talk about it later on. And let's press OK and let's try to deploy this collection. So there you can see now the collection has been deployed and inside this collection I can know I can now go and add items right. So I can go and add JSON data inside this. So remember at the top we have database then we have collections and then we have documents. So now I can go and click on new document so you can see that by default he gives me an ID so if you remember I said everything what you store inside Cosmos DB aka document DB is a JSON data right so I can say the ID is 1001 and then I will say the name is Shiv right remember you can have different different JSON structure row wise so it's not necessary that you have to store in the same structure that's what the uh, flexibility of uh, no SQL is right so you can see I'm going and saving the first record, the first document. So there it is, 1001. I can go and again click, click on new document. I can say this is 1002. And I can say now this has name, uh, Shiv. And this has one more property here called as country. So country, India, right. You can say save. So you can see now, look at the structure. At the top we have database, then we have collections, and then we have documents. And every document is, uh, you know, is nothing but it's in it's in JSON format, right? Now, one of the other things you know which we discussed uh, in our classes, so we discuss about consistency, right? So this consistency is set by using this replicate data globally so you can see this small menu out here replicate data globally so you can click on that and now you can see this nice screen out here and it says that so tell me which are your right regions and which are your read regions remember i talked about write region and read region right so i can go here and i can say that okay so at this moment you can see it says your right region is central us and the read region is east us but I do have the flexibility to go and choose, you know, what I want as read regions and the propagation will start happening automatically. Okay. Now, please note that the name is planet scale as well as the money is planet scale. So, so be very choosy in what you're doing. If you're choosing too many locations, you'll be ending up with a heavy bill. So it's very important that which locations you want to replicate, right? So there is one right region and there is one read region at this moment. You can also see this default consistency over here. So you can see that the consistency which we discussed in the previous 20 minutes of the video. So you can choose strong, you can choose bounded staleness, you can choose consistent prefix. At this moment, I will choose eventual 
I will choose eventual because I do not want to spend too much money, right? It's a demo. But you can see like, for example, if you put uh, bounded staleness, it gives you saying that tell me the minimum time the lag should be if you put session and consistent prefix. So uh, you can choose any one of them. I'm going to go and choose eventual so that I get a less bill. Replicate data globally in that I have just chosen one write location and one read location. So you can see now it is updating my default consistency here. So there you can see that my default consistency is updated. Now, let me go back to this replicate data globally. You can see at this moment, there is only one write region. If you wish to have failovers, failovers means that if this write region is unsuccessful, then you would like to have another read region to become a write region, right? So for that, you can go and click on this manual failover or you can go and click on the automatic failover, right? So whichever you want to select. So for example, let us say I go and on this automatic failover. So it says that, so go ahead and say like, for example, at this moment I have just one read region, but I can, uh, I can, I can go and say that when there is a failover into this write region, then make this read region as the second priority. So over here, for example, now let me go and select, uh, let me go and say, okay, let's say that I have different write regions here. So let's say I have one more write region right let us say i will just save this please note that the more regions you select the more bad it is you will get heavy bills so this is only for uh, the purpose of learning right as soon as the learning finishes i go and delete all my resources which are connected to such kind of a heavy bill right so you can see it is updating let's give it some time and then i will go to automatic failover so in automatic failover then i will see two read regions so i can say okay that if there is a failover in the first write region, then I can go and give priority to my read region and say that which of the read region should become a write region. So let us see that option. It's updating. Remember, Azure Cosmos DB is a planet scale database, right? So when you are updating any settings, you know, he has to replicate all across the geography. So that's why it takes a bit of a time. So there my regions have been created. You can see it's clearly a note here. Each region is billable you know, not only on the throughput, but also on the storage. So even if you're not doing anything, your meter is going on. So please ensure that you make appropriate choice. So I'll say enable uh, automatic failover. So in other words, if this right region fails, I want East US to be the first priority and South Central US to be the second priority. But if I want, I can drag and drop. So you can see here, I can uh, click on this small dot. You can see there's a small dotted sign out here. We can select this. Why isn't it getting selected? Uh, on the left to reorder the list. Yeah, I'm trying that. So click on this and there it is. Ah, it's horrible. What's in the UI? Why? Drag and drop the read regions to reorder. Tip, drag this on the left to reorder okay so i'm dragging this to the left to reorder oh there it is it's done now <laughs> so whatever it is you know so you do have the option to go and change the orders from here right uh, and you can go and uh, switch to automatic failover right so remember uh, not only the read but also if you want you can make the right regions as well as uh, automatic failover enabled good now the next thing what we would like to do out here is we would like to go and use some programming language like C Sharp or something you know to go and connect to this Azure Cosmos DB, right? So let us see a small example of how to go and connect to Azure Cosmos using C Sharp programming language. So in order to connect to the Cosmos DB, you need the keys. So you can go and click on this keys section out here and from here you can go and choose the keys, right? Or, or you need to use these keys in your C Sharp language. So you can see here the code of C Sharp looks something like this. So first is the endpoint URL. So the endpoint URL at this moment is my cosmos one two three dot documents whatever, right? So I'm going to go and uh, connect over here. Then I need the primary key. So I'm going to go and choose my primary key. I can copy it, right? And I can put it right out here. 
so there it is okay uh, and that's it now remember our online Azure Cosmos DB at this moment has a structure of an ID and a name so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and stick to that so we have an ID and we have a name right so you can see here what I'm doing is I'm creating first the object of document client and in this document client I'm passing the URL and the primary key. So this key will help me to validate to my Azure and then I'm say, saying okay so we have created a collection here so if you remember uh, one is that you can go and you can create a collection if you wish right. Uh, so you can see we have the collection what was our collection name so let us go to data explorer our collection name was db1 call1 right so db1 and call1 I'm sorry so let's go here db1 right and the collection was call1 right so in this you can see I'm saying please go and get me this x type this x is nothing but the JSON class the JSON data right so you can see that I've just kept the same kind of a structure so please go and get me the JSON data of uh, the Azure Cosmos DB and we can then go and loop through that and I would like to display the name ID as well as I would like to display the name right so x dot the name okay right so at this moment what I've done is you can see that I actually am removing that region so that region is still going on so once this region is done right we would like to go and execute this program and we would like to go and see the output so there you can see that that region has been removed uh, so now if I go and run this program I should see two rows one is 1001 shiv and the other one is 1002 shiv so if you remember if you go to our data explorer so in the data explorer if you remember we had two documents right so we had 1001 which is having the value shiv there is 1002 which is having the value shiv you can see there are a lot of other properties as well but these properties are as add, are added by azure cosmos db now remember that whenever i am taking these trainings at this moment of azure right i am not concentrating too much on the programming api at this moment why because i am planning to have separate topics to just go and query azure cosmos db to query Azure tables, to query Azure blobs. So you will see that in the later sections of the Azure training, you will see a lot of Shisha with Azure. But at this moment, my goal is that to make you acquainted with all these concepts of Azure, which are very uh, uh, confusing, right? So, so at this moment, do not worry too much. You must be thinking that, oh, tell me that how do you create a stored procedure? Tell me how do you do that? Absolutely, I'll tell you. But at this moment, let us first try to cover the breadth of Azure because Azure is a huge thing, right? So let us try to understand what are the different options given by Azure and then programming is easy. We are Shisha programmers, you know, it's, we have been doing Shisha for a long time. So that is something we can do it more easily. But these concepts like consistency levels, you know, Azure tables, function apps, these are so new things for us that we first need to understand those concepts. And then the programming part is easy. So good. Uh, so please note that we are going to have that in the later sections of the training. So that brings us to the end of this video. So in this video, we were trying to understand what exactly is Azure Cosmos DB, what are the different consistency levels, you know, which are available in Azure Cosmos and how to go and use C Sharp to connect to Azure Cosmos. <music>